Hey everybody, Jason from Geeks and Drinks here. It is the morning after the Nintendo press conference showing everything about the Nintendo Switch. Their upcoming console handheld hybrid thing that just looks awesome. I just wanted to give you a complete lowdown on all the information that has been released so far. Everything about the console, the controllers, all the... Uh, games that have been announced, when they're coming out, and all these extra little bits, tidbits of information that have been making its way online over the past few hours. First off, we have a launch date, March 3rd, 2017. We are less than two months away from picking this console up for yourself. And we also have a price for here in the United States. It's $300. Pre-orders are available right now. Most places online have already sold out. I actually rushed to my local GameStop this morning to pick mine up, plus reserved a couple games as well. So if you're still looking for a place to reserve one yourself, most of the places online have seemed already sold out. Uh, there are a couple places, um, but I would normally recommend at this point, just go into your local game store, your Best Buy, what have you, and reserve it there. But let's stop talking about how you can pre-order this. Let's get into what you are pre-ordering. For the Nintendo Switch, the hardware is essentially a tablet with controllers. You guys already know that aspect, but we're going to dive into what else this thing includes. The screen on the Nintendo Switch itself uh, has been now confirmed to be a multi-touch capacitive touchscreen. 720p resolution, which makes perfect sense if you were trying to do 1080p gaming all the time. I can imagine that battery life dwindling significantly. This thing also includes some built-in memory, 32 gigs in fact, and before you start freaking out thinking that's not enough, thankfully they actually included the option to expand that internal memory yourself with a micro SD card slot. This system does have internal Wi-Fi and you actually can connect up to 8 systems over Wi-Fi for local multiplayer. We already knew that this console was being powered by a modified version of the NVIDIA Tegra chip. This powerful little chip has already been used initially in the original NVIDIA Shield gaming system, as well as a couple tablets and other hardware coming out in the very near future. What we didn't know was regarding the battery life, which has been claimed to be about two and a half to six and a half hours, depending on which game you are playing. For example, if you were going to play Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on this, Nintendo is stating this is going to have approximately three hours of game time per charge. When the time does come to charge your Nintendo Switch, thankfully Nintendo has looked towards current technology and announced that they are going to be using USB Type-C cables to handle all of your charging needs. On the dock itself, you have three USB 2.0 ports, two in the side, one in the back, a USB Type-C plug for your power, and one single HDMI port on the back. There is also a little LED notification on the front to notify you that there is a signal going to your TV. When the initial announcement video came out, a lot of questions were left unanswered regarding the controllers themselves, like whether or not they had motion control or internal batteries or they use double A's or what have you. Now we have a better understanding of what these controls can do and my god they packed a lot of tech into them. For starters, yes, they have internal rechargeable batteries. You do not need to worry about trying to buy double or triple A's for these things. Aside from the usual assortment of clickable control sticks and D-pads, A, B, X, Y, there's also trigger buttons. And on the sides of them, when you're not connected to the Switch console itself, there's actually shoulder buttons. Now, when you combine these with the Joy-Con wrist strap, it actually accentuates the left-right shoulder buttons. That's a lot of buttons, but for a very small package. So people like me that have huge hands, I'm wondering if I'm going to have a problem, you know, button mashing or pressing the, uh, the wrong button at the wrong time, but we will see. There's also some additional tech into these controllers as well, especially in the Joy-Con right. This includes NFC read-write capabilities so you can use your, all your old Amiibos with your upcoming games on the Switch, as well as surprisingly a motion IR camera built into the bottom of it, which actually can recognize hand gestures, they showcase rock, paper, scissors, and also proximity basically how close your hand will get to the controller itself. Finally, they're touting a new advanced rumble feature that they're calling HD Rumble. The demo for this was the ability on one controller to recognize if a glass has one, two, or three ice cubes and how full it's, the cup is being filled with water. Now, does this mean like the same type of uh, taptic response or feedback that you would get from, say, the uh, iPhone 7? Maybe. We'll have to see. 
all in all, Nintendo packed a hell of a lot of tech into these controllers, but it is also let to be seen how well these things actually work in real life. We'll have to see March 3rd. Moving on, Nintendo also announced their online service. Now they're jumping in the pool like with Microsoft and Sony, and it's going to be a paid service. Uh, this will allow you to play online with friends. Uh, there will be a free trial period when it starts in March. The paid service will not start until fall 2017. The eShop is still included, but I'm sad to report that there was no confirmation of the rumor of the GameCube games actually being added to the eShop. I myself am massively looking forward to replaying Super Mario Sunshine, especially on a handheld device. But with the online service, you have online multiplayer gaming, you'll have a lobby and voice chat. There's actually going to be an exclusive monthly download either from the NES or Super NES. The odd thing though, it is not something for you to keep. You only have the option to play it for free for a month with some included multiplayer features built in. And of course, you're always going to have exclusive deals. If you're paying extra, you'll get discounts on other games and features later down the road. There will also be a companion app that you'll be using on your smart device, basically your iPhone, your Android, your tablets, to allow you to chat with friends, invite other people to your group, scheduling gaming sessions or playdates as they were calling them. But it seems like just like the online service, the app itself will be only free for a limited time. There will be a paid version of the app later on. For those of you starting to cry foul about this, we just said the same thing about Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus. Get over it. <laughs> well, let's talk bundles right now for what you're going to be getting with your Nintendo Switch. Obviously, you'll include the Switch console, you'll include a single dock, and then you'll have two Joy-Cons included. You'll have the option of getting either gray colored or a neon red, neon blue version. It will also include two wrist straps, the Joy Grip, which will actually charge your Joy Cons, uh, an AC adapter with the USB Type C cable, and surprisingly, an HDMI cable. Not many companies are willing to actually ship an HDMI cable with their hardware, so it's a nice little change. Thankfully, Nintendo is providing the ability to purchase additional controllers right off the bat. Starting with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which was showcased in the initial video, you can buy that for $70. These are the MSRP prices right now. You can buy uh, additional Joy-Con controllers. A single Joy-Con controller is going to be $50, or you can buy the two-pack for $80 in both gray, red, blue, or uh, individual colors. The uh, additional Joy-Con charging grip is 30. And finally, Nintendo is offering an expansion Nintendo Switch dock set. So if you already want to play your Nintendo Switch on, say, your living room TV, but then later on you want to move over to your bedroom TV, you can actually buy another dock set. So it includes the dock, the AC adapter, and another HDMI cable. The downside to this, it's $90. That's fairly expensive for just another dock, but this is Nintendo. They're going to do what they're going to do, and let's face it, whatever they do, it prints money, so... So be it. How about we get over to the games themselves? Now, they focused only about three or four different games, one which we've knew, known about already, Legend of Zelda, but these others is kind of hit and miss. The first game that they showcased was 1-2 Switch. Essentially, this is that tech demo game that previous consoles have had. You know, with the Nintendo Wii, you had Wii Sports. With the Wii U, you had Nintendo Land. With this is basically showcasing a way for you to get comfortable with their new control scheme. This collection of mini games, it could be very fun, but for a very short period of time, kind of like WarioWare back in the day, uh, their little gimmick about this is it's not really designed for you to uh, face the screen. This is more so for you to face your player, to look your competitor in the eyes for all these mini games. That's probably going to get boring very quickly. But hopefully it does its job. It is just a tech demo. Surprised to see they're actually charging 60 bucks for it, but it is what it is. The next one was ARMS, this boxing game that looks, and I'm going to date myself here, like Stretch Armstrong got into the ring. The idea about it, you have two players able to uh, box each other with extendable and retractable arms. The game itself is designed to be using both of the Joy-Cons as boxing gloves. You are actually using them to both punch, move, dodge, do super moves, etc. You're never really using a button except for like jump and dash. Now you can play two player on a single Nintendo Switch. You'll just need to sync two more Joy-Cons to the same system. I can see this being fun. The demo that they've had on stage looked very chaotic, but it could be for a fun party game. The next one is probably one of Nintendo's 
biggest new IPs to date, Splatoon 2. This new version of the game will include new characters, new weapons, new battle modes, and new levels. This sequel will also include local and online multiplayer, so it's going to tie into that online service you're going to be paying out for. So it looks fun. The first game was a ton of fun. I play it. I still play it to this day. And uh, I can only imagine the fact that I'll be able to play this on the go, it'll be almost nonstop on my system. We finally got a look at the next Super Mario game, and this one's called Super Mario Odyssey. And it's kind of interesting because the theme is traveling to new worlds. The one they focused on was basically our world, the, re uh, the real world, which is an interesting idea. It's been done before, you know, Sonic Adventure and what have you. But it also, it was still very highly stylized. Some people may look at it as underpowered graphics, but it's Nintendo. They usually do a really good job of this. The gameplay still looks fun. It looks like standard Mario with always with that twist. Remember, they had twists with Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy. So this time around, his hat seems to be sentient. It has two eyes and it does these weird things. Plus, also, there's a scene where Mario is flying in a spaceship that looks like the hat. I, I, I don't know what, what's going on with this. We do have t uh, time to wait, though, because this will not be a launch title. It'll be available currently for holiday 2017. The next part of the presentation was talking all about just a slew of upcoming games, both just recently announced and stuff they've been working on already. Uh, Suda51 himself came on stage and said, Travis Touchdown is coming to the Nintendo Switch in one form or another. What does this mean? Maybe it's a new New More Heroes game. Maybe it's just a port of the original game. Who knows? It was a ton of fun. I cannot wait to check this one out. Also is an updated version of Mario Kart 8 called Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You'll have new characters, new maps. They updated and fixed the battle modes, and up to eight players can play simultaneously. Square Enix showed off uh, just a brief glimpse at their upcoming game, which they're calling Project Octopath Traveler. It's a 2D sprites in a 3d space we've seen uh similar versions before but it has a new sense of polish over it and in any case i'm very curious to see what squeenix has to offer some other games announced were dragon quest 10 and 11 dragon quest heroes 1 and 2 just dance 2017 fifa rayman legends minecraft a new shin megami tensei game uh you have xenoblade chronicles 2 i'm looking forward to that one and many many more Nintendo has stated from the beginning they are focusing on a lot of third-party development for this console. They've mentioned that before with past consoles, and it never really truly came out. Yes, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, confirmations that, yes, people are working on games for this console. But when you have things like, hey, we're bringing Skyrim, a game that's several years old, to this console... It makes me wonder if we're going to get brand new IPs or are we going to get just ports of other games? But if Nintendo has always been known for one thing, it is to reboot, rehash, and continue to use their original IPs. And this last game we're going to talk about is no exception, and I am still very happy for this. It's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We've heard about this before for a couple years now. Nintendo only focused on this one game at last year's E3, using their entire massive poo space just for this game. And at that time, they were only showing it on the Wii U system. It's still coming out for Wii U, but I have a feeling many people are going to pick this up for the Nintendo Switch. They did confirm, thankfully, this is going to be a launch title. It will be available March 3rd, 2017. And there's actually three different versions you can order. First is just the game itself, no additional features. A special edition, which includes the game, a carry case, a collectible coin, a map, and a soundtrack for $90. And a master edition for $130. This includes everything in the special edition, plus the Master Sword of Resurrection figure. Sadly, the master version is currently sold out in most places, both in-store and online, but you can still get the regular and special version. Or you can just go on eBay after the game comes out and buy the master version for, you know, three times the price. But in any case, Nintendo released a lot of information. Still some questions left to be answered, but honestly, I am really happy for this. I'm happy about the price point. I'm happy about the release date being less than two months away. I am so happy there is zero region lock on this. For the sole fact that there were so many games out there that came out only in Japan that I wanted to play. And either I would have to buy a system from Japan to play it, uh, or I would just have to wait for someone to play it online and I just, you know, watch it. 
Not anymore. I can actually be able to play these games if I so please. The other fact is there was always a split between what games to pick up because you had to deal with, do I want to make a console game or do I want to make a handheld game? With Nintendo merging the two together, I can only imagine that many production companies are going, oh, I can actually just focus all my efforts on a single game instead of trying to figure out what version of it to make. I'm so stoked for that. and I hope you guys are too. Well, that's it for my wrap up the Nintendo Switch press conference and subsequent information that was released on their website. I'm looking forward to this. I hope you are too. If you have any you know, comments, questions, are you going to pick one up? Do you think it sucks? I want to hear all this. Let me know. I'm on Facebook and Twitter at Otaku Life Jason. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. Yeah.